I'm a diehard staunch believer in family businesses. Family members being the first and original employees of a business was the original business model before humans even invented the term for it. Back in the pre-capitalism days, especially in the hunter-gatherer days, that was the tribal effort to survive. Your kin was your team. You unified under a banner with a leader to work and fight together, to have each other's backs. That was your clan. Your job was to hunt and gather, and then later to farm and defend your lands. That's one of the main reasons why children born to a family were considered a blessing. They were employees before we even created the term for it. There was no LinkedIn job post back then, no classified ads, no job resume. More children meant more people to help work the field to raise more crops, which meant higher chances of survival or to bring home more food from the hunt with higher chances of bringing down bigger game. Or it meant more trustworthy generals for your army or heirs for your throne all of which were ancient jobs. Being a king was a job. Being a knight was a job. If you were a family of knights, you were essentially a factory that produced knights. That's what you were socially known for, producing knights, thereby making each kid the employee, quote unquote, right, in training to become a knight for the company called your family name here. And your coat of arms was essentially your ancient company logo. If you were a blacksmith, you worked your entire life to build skills that you'd pass down to, hopefully, at least one of your children to carry on a family business. Through that family business and the passing down of trade skills and secrets, you built generational wealth and long-term stability. Nowadays, we criticize that as nepotism, but I'd say that's just philosophically rationalized envy. Why not teach your child what you know to help them provide for themselves? That would be the means through which one's children would earn an allowance. More than just simply, here's $5 for doing the dishes, Instead, here's $500 as your cut of the family's profit this week because of the skills they'd have learned and contributed to the whole. The modern equivalent to the kid's slice of the boar he'd have helped his father hunt and so forth. If a kid wants to break away and do something different with his life, I think they should be totally free to do that. However, there should still be that family business there acting as the figurative welfare net, the fallback, the backup plan in case things don't work out. Always welcome back to the family, not state welfare. Otherwise, you may be a family, but you all work in completely different fields for completely different companies, serving completely different missions, fulfilling completely different unrelated narratives. The only thing you might share in common that unifies you anymore is parental psychology. But that's actually a pretty weak force when you zoom out and consider what once was, what family, kin, alt, clan, and so forth used to mean. And then so many of us wonder why it's annoying to attend pointless family gatherings modern day. It's like, no. The family gathering was originally that time off you'd take together because you'd have been working against the forces of nature to survive in harsh conditions otherwise. It was your time to enjoy each other's presence and appreciate each other's lives after fighting wars and braving winters together. Because you may not, you, you, you weren't sure if you were ever going to see each other again after the next battle or the next winter. Removing, remove that unifying element, and yes, it makes perfect sense. You're not truly family, you're just individuals who share genes while living under the same roof, and that's just your immediate household. It gets even more disconnected when we speak of cousins, uncles, and aunts. When they used to be the village that raised you, the people you relied on, not simply gathered together in a dysfunctional manner because of some tradition you forgot the purpose of, following the remnant vestiges of generational programming like an organic robot who's following genetic memory but lacks self-awareness. There used to be a strategic purpose, a point to having children that still very much exist, but so many of us have forgotten. Nowadays, that's probably my only major gripe about modern capitalism, how population growth and hyper-individualism, different than healthy individualism, which I distinguish as different, has had this effect on the family. I used to have such disdain for tightly knit families, particularly that which we see in Asian families so often, but it was really just envy. Coming from a broken home, it blew my mind when I'd speak to a guy who had told me he had all this money in his pocket from earning it with his dad at a hospital they ran. His dad trained him to be a radiologist. He just had the educational materials for it in his home. Guaranteed employment thanks to the family. He could leave to do or study something else, but he knew at the end of the day, if he screwed up everything else in his life, he never had to go homeless because dad made a way for him, as his father made a way for him, and so on and so forth. I wish I had that. I can now provide it as I've broken this cycle, but I will never know what it must feel like to have that kind of security, to know your, that your family genuinely has your back. I envied it then, but it's the way I believe it should be. That is the original way. Family meant something to him. It, it didn't mean anything to me, because why would it? Now it can. My kids can grow up to try all different kinds of crazy stuff and never have to experience that extreme 
health and fertility destroying anxiety of not having family to rely on. My son can fail at nine out of 10 dreams in his life and still say to himself, you know what? That's okay. I gave, I gave my all to my childhood dreams. I gave my, all my childhood dreams my best shot. I'm content with life. I can always return home to build cool scientific stuff with my dad for income. And then maybe he inherits the throne of the company when I pass away. If not him, then one of my other kids. That's the way it should be. That's natural. There is always someone out there more qualified or smarter or more capable that I might be able to find and hire. But if we lose our sense of family and this hyper-individualistic sense of extra Darwinian survival of the fittest stressors that are already more than we'd have to face otherwise, we do real harm to ourselves and erode the fabric of our entire civilization. Thoughts?